part of playoff action. These guys are, are doing some financial planning. Little extra money on the line here in the Western Final. A chance for the big money in the Great Cup. Gary Durant, a lot of steamboats again. And he's going to throw that away. Darian Durant off to a slow start as he got off to in the in the semifinal against the Lions, but he didn't wait till halftime to regroup. This time he regrouped in the second, had 102 yards passing. Of course, the numbers are going to be down because of the conditions, but a good second quarter for Darian Durant. And did the passing yards come, for the most part, after the rushing yards were put on the board? Just seemed like that 22-yard run got him going. As a run early in the third quarter last week did. Second and ten. Three-man rush. Got a time. And now running out of it. And down he goes. Tom Johnson. Or check that Brandon Browner with the tackle. And the sack. We've seen this a couple of times where they'll line Brandon Browner up on Andy Fantus, but this time they try and confuse Darian Durant. He's just to the right of your screen here. There's Fantus there. Now, as he comes off, he's going to make it look like he's going to cover Fantus. Then he comes on the blitz. Now he's working on Dan Goodspeed, works inside him, and finally gets home. So the stamp defense pushes Saskatchewan back and Eddie Johnson. The boot has Tally back to his 39. And Tally again kicks it outside, gets close to midfield. 14 more for Landon Tally on that punt return. Two-point rider lead. Let's check back in with Farhan Lalji. Well, Chris, Omar Morgan will not return to this game. He really wanted to try and give it a go, but his knee was not even close, according to team staff. As for Baron Simpson, he's still feeling the effects of his ankle injury. He took treatment on the bench at one point during the first half. Also went into halftime early, but he's good to go. He hasn't missed a play, nor does he plan to in this half. Baron showing some toughness. And how about Lalji on the sidelines? Looking like it's just a nice spring day. And the Bulls sweep the clock for what a hit on John Corner, Jarrell Freeman. With a huge hit on the Calgary running back. Jarrell Freeman talked about Baron Simpson and what he means to this defense after that big hit. And, and he can take a, a little bit of this nickname himself. He said the minister, minister of defense in the middle, number two there, has made a reputation as being a tough linebacker. He says, when Baron Simpson plays, he brings a thump to the game. Jarrell Freeman just brought a thump to John Corners. Did he ever? No gain on the play, second and 10, and flags fly. But you gotta love Baron Simpson gunning it out. I mean, this is, that ankle injury, the last game of the regular season, and for Simpson to just gut it out, get treatment in between, the cold makes those Knicks that much tougher to fight through. And he doesn't want to be pulled off that field. I asked Joffrey Reynolds. Offside, Calgary, number 85, five-yard penalty, still second down. Kenyon Rambo called for the offside. I said to ask Joffrey Reynolds, I said, you know, you got your job to do. Does it matter to you who plays in the middle of the defense? Do you care if Baron Simpson plays? And without hesitation, Joffrey Reynolds looked at me, oh, yeah, no, no, I want to know if he's in there or not. Well, Barron's on a mission, 10-year veteran of the league. Five times he's led the CFL in tackles, has never won a great cup. Second and 15, and Henry Burris over the middle, and he comes it in there. Big catch there by... Nick Lewis, you know, Matt Dunnigan told us last night at our meeting that he'd be key today with those big hands in the cold weather, and that's a clutch catch to sustain a drive. Well, you know, Nick Lewis is physical, right? He loves the contact. He doesn't mind getting down on the ice, getting down in the snow. Nice little double move on Tad Cornegay. Little outside fake. He didn't slow his momentum and then came back across the middle, had to go down low to make a tough catch. 29 second down catches on the year. That was fourth in the league and a big one on second down. 16 yards for Lewis. Now John Cornish with a cutback. Finds the win. John Cornish down to the 20 and finally brought down by Nick Graham. 
John Cornish rips off another big game. And guess who is leading the way for John Cornish, the tailback in the backfield here. It's going to be big number 82 who's getting involved in this offense. He's, you're going to see him in a second. Here he comes. Now, now 82, the, the guy that John Huffnagel described as a truck with no brakes going downhill is going to lead the way for his running back. Over one quarter of John Cornish's carries this year for 10 yards or more, and he just ripped off 28 on that rush. First down steps. Five receivers out. Now Cornish releases. Lewis looking downfield and incomplete. I'm a little surprised that Henry Burris has not taken off and run the football that much at all. I mean, he had another chance there to go ahead and run, probably pick up seven, eight, maybe more. He is a very good running quarterback. And like Durant, I, I believe he's at his best when he's mixing in the run and the pass. In three games this year, the Calgary Stampeders against Saskatchewan, Henry Burris had 72 yards rushing. One yard in the loss, 71 of them in the two wins. Wouldn't hook up with Landon Talley on that one, setting up second and ten. Lewis stays in the block, the pressure, and it's incomplete for Cornish as Kitwana Jones came off the edge. And the field goal team has to come on for the Stamps. Kitwana Jones has the perfect lane here. Underrated defensive player in this team. He's got two sacks in the regular season against Henry Burris and is the perfect rush lane. He made Burris throw it around Kitwana Jones to get it to Cornish because if he does, Cornish is probably still running. So Rob Maver from 25 yards out. And Maver puts it through and Calgary back in the lead. 15-14 early third quarter. been scored at one end. Here's Wes Cates heading the other direction. And Cates with a good run of eight yards on first down for the Rough Riders. How do you get on TSN? Well, <laughs> when the windshield's <laughs> minus 26 oh, and man. the shirts come off and... I tell you what, they, they, they've got to have some antifreeze in them right now. I, wow. <laughs> Second and two for the Rough Riders. Back to Keats. Bounces off first contact. Got the first down. Ball popped loose. And Calgary says they got it. Oh, boy. Couldn't hear a whistle initially. Keats spun off first contact. It is Calgary football. Well, we're going to have to take a look at this. And then... I didn't hear a whistle either, Chris, and it looked like Cates were spinning, trying to get an extra yard or two. Now, my question is, and I'm sure Ryder fans are wondering, was Wes Cates down by contact? So the contact is made there. His elbow goes down. When does the ball come out? Well, I think we'll see the challenge flag, and it already is out on the field after that look. Justin Phillips with the tackle. The field was a fumble followed by a recovery by Oh, Calgary. that ball might have been coming out. And so Jake Ireland's going to have to take a few different looks here to determine any part of the body except the hand or feet touching the ground constitutes the player being down by contact and contact was made obviously prior to him on his way to the ground. So let's take the reverse angle take one more look at Wes Cates it's that close here. And this is a big Saskatchewan is challenging the ruling on the field of the fumble. Now knee down the there. will be reviewed. You just have to Shuttle actually it. stop it just as the ball comes out or just before the knee touches. Let's take one more look. And I'm wondering about that left elbow as well, Chris. Mm -hmm. Very close as again, Justin Phillips with the tackle. Keats would have the first down. He's got possession there. Now, the elbow's on the ground there. It's just hard to tell because of 
Jawan Simpson's blocking the shot a little bit. Let's take one more angle from a different look. Many times this year, even with all the different looks we have, there's not enough evidence to overturn a call. And whether it was ruled a fumble or down by contact, those calls would, would remain. I'm not sure. That's going to be that close. And it's a critical call here. Either first down Saskatchewan or Calgary takes over in Rough Rider territory. Oh, absolutely. And in, you're talking about a game like this with the conditions continually, continuing to deteriorate. Field position that much more important. Would be the first fumble lost in the game, so credit both teams for stressing bowl security so far. Kate staying out in anticipation that it's going his way. It looked to me like Kate's left elbow was the first to touch the ground. And the question was, or is, was there a shot that showed the ball coming out prior to that elbow touching? Kate's mentioned uh, yesterday he was going to go without sleeves as many of the offensive players have for a better feel of the football. And, and right now, both teams are trying to influence the officials by putting both offenses on the field. <laughs> Calgary's got their offense out there. Saskatchewan's got their offense out there. They're trying. It, it doesn't matter. You think Jake Eilis <laughs> checking that out? I don't think that matters. He's, he's got. But he's taking his time on this yes, one. He's got to look at. This is a very important call, and they're going to take a good long look at this, and I don't blame him. That was tough. It's going to be a tough call to make. down there now do you see the ball come out prior you just you lose it for a second and that's why this is going to be a tough one to overturn that's the one angle so when you first saw it you thought he was down before the ball popped loose but other angles are uh, a little tougher to determine and this is a long review for Jake Ireland. It, it, it's one of the longest I think we've been involved with this year, and it's that important. Well, we're told five minute review. Uh, I think back in the initial early stages of review, it was uh, a determined time limit, but. Well, it is. And, and, but, you know, I know the importance of this one. They're trying to get it right and, and take a long look. They also have to be concerned with the players, though, because they've got to try kind of stay loose and stay warm here. You move into that five minute mark without moving around too much, you start to freeze up. And in fairness to Jake, who is sitting in a warm review booth. It is a, a very difficult call. And Players have got to try and stay warm now while they get this figured out. Darian Durant with no sleeves. Well, here we go. Well, I think if I could read lips, I think he said, is it a first down? Well, it's a first down one way or the other because Keats was down across the 45 where he had to get to. That would indicate it's going to be Saskatchewan football. Well, if he's, if he's asking if that was first down game, then that means they're overturning it. Let's see. Some of the Calgary Upon defense. Review, the ball carrier was down by contact. Just a bit over the 45-yard line. It will be first down, Saskatchewan. 
I think some of the Calgary defense uh, overheard it because they started coming up before the announcement that Ryder Nation is celebrating that call. I just wondered about that elbow. That elbow looked like it came down now. Uh, Clearly, after all the looks and the time that they took in the control center, they did see that elbow touch before the ball was jarred loose. So Saskatchewan does get the first down. A new set of downs and a very important call because it would have flopped field position in a hurry. Turnovers remain even. And as Schultz mentioned, you wonder if a turnover is going to be the deciding factor in a evenly played contest so far. Shouldn't have huddled up with the heater with that over five minute review, but now they go back to work. Justin Phillips makes a tackle and not much there for Jason Claremont. Pick up a three. How about Jason Claremont's semifinal catch in overtime? His first touchdown as a Saskatchewan Rough Rider, his first touchdown in over 40 games. And it was a huge touchdown in overtime to get his football team to this West Final. You could just see in the last few weeks of the year. Claremont becoming a more important part of this Rough Rider offense. Second and seven. Six receivers out for the left. They have to do for a step slam. Breaks a tackle. Has a first down. Brandon Isaac pulls him down. The initial contact was short. A first down yardage when Chris Getzlaff has been a handful this afternoon. Well, I guess we shouldn't be surprised that one of the toughest players out there in this cold has been Chris Getzlaff, who comes on a crossing route here. He's going to work oh, underneath of Jason Claremont, who tries to get a rub on the linebacker there, Juwan Simpson. Just gets enough of them. Getzlaff breaks the tackle. You know, it almost like he has a little hockey tough in him. Oh, I we would he, get that. <laughs> I wonder how how that had happened, and I'm sure Ryan's trying to keep tabs on this game. Getzlaff has had a terrific six-catch game so far. There is an injured Calgary Stampeder on the play, and it's Keon Raymond who has been, uh, for the most part, covering Getzlaff on the day, although I don't believe on that last play. Well, that's been the matchup. They put Keon Raymond right on Chris Getzlaff, Brandon Browner on Andy Fantus, and Dwight Anderson on Weston Dressler. Checking to see if it's Brandon Isaac in the replacement to Raymond as Keats gets the ball and not much there. Justin Phillips again on the stop. The Laurier products but active today. Important down here in second and long. Chance for Calgary Stampeders. Brandon Isaacs made some plays as a rotation player and an extra defensive back. So he's comfortable coming in on that defense. A big down here for Ken Miller's offense trying to move the chains. But more importantly, that call changes things for him to get that field position. Chris Jones. Normally, we'll blitz and play man to man in this situation. Oh, second and long, and here come the stamps. Showing pressure. Durant's got gets up again. First down inside the 30. Seven catches, and again, we mentioned the first half. He had 201 in a game earlier this year against Calgary. Andy Fantuz will find ways to contribute. That's the type of football player he is. If he's not a part of the passing game and there's, they're going away from him for the ball, he can do other things to help out. He steps in, makes sure he seals an inside gap to give a lot of time to Darian Durant. But watch these blitzers for Calgary. They're not coming hard. They're waiting. They're a little worried about Darian Durant running out of there and taking off. Formation and the straight ahead. Kate's breaking tackles. And he has another first down inside the 20. 
Well, they fake Fantuz on the end of line. I'm yeah. not sure we've seen that play much for we, Saskatchewan. You know, we have Chris, but with, with West and Dressler, not Fantuz. So they're bringing Fantuz in here now. He comes this way, and right on the opposite direction goes West Kate. So a little misdirection there, and this time it's Fantuz, and they get Lysak too high, chasing Fantuz around the edge. Four rough riders in the backfield. Three now scatter. First down. Quarterback drive. Billy and Durant pull it down inside the 10. Close to another first down. Got to get one block in there because I think it's Malik Jackson, the linebacker, that's going to try and spy on Darian Durant. Pretty much Calgary has left one of these linebackers sort of waiting in here to see if he's going to take off and run. This time it's Malik Jackson, but watch West Cates, number 20. He steps up in there, seals it for his quarterback to pick up another four or five yards right down the middle. 10 for Durant, the first down he is. Now looking at first and goal, Durant four carries, 41 yards of the day. Into the end zone, he wants to get slapped in the battle, and it's knocked down. North Collins was step for step that time.